All right, in this video, I'm going to do some integration by parts, integration using integration by parts. And the integration by parts formula says you're basically going to start with one integral. You're going to call one part of it u, one part of it dv, and then you're going to use kind of a relabeling to come up with a new integral. And the idea is hopefully this new integral that you end up with is going to be a little bit easier to deal with. So as an example here, suppose we're integrating x times e to the negative x. As a rule of thumb, um, and you know this definitely doesn't always work, but I pick u to be the thing that when I take the derivative of it, it becomes easier, more simple. Well, if I pick u to equal x, I'll simply get 1 when I take the du, the derivative of it. If I pick u to be e to the negative x, well, if I pick that to be u, I'm simply going to get negative e to the negative x, which it doesn't seem any easier. So I'm going to pick the e to the negative x dx stuff. I'm going to call that dv. Okay, so now I'm going to write down that my u is equal to x. My dv is equal to e to the negative x. So to get du, you simply take the derivative of the u piece, and we'll get 1 dx. And to get to the v piece, you actually have to integrate. So this is kind of tedious. Um, so kind of off to the side, we have to integrate e to the negative x. And you can check my arithmetic here, my calculus. You should get negative e to the negative x when you integrate that. So now I'm going to use all of this stuff, this u, d, u, v, d, v, and I'm going to fill in the right-hand side of this equal sign. So it says I have u, which is x, times v, which is, I'll pull the negative out front, e to the negative x, and then I subtract away v, which again is negative e to the negative x. I'm going to pull the negative out front and make it positive. And then it says you tack on your du, which is simply the term dx. So now if I finish off this integration, well, I've got my negative x e to the negative x. I'm done with that part. We've actually already integrated e to the negative x. I mean, that's what we did to calculate our v term in the first place. So if you integrate e to the negative x, you get negative e to the negative x. And then we simply tag on our plus c term. And we have now used integration by parts to calculate the integral of x e to the negative x. Whoops, so plus c. So let's do another one of these. Suppose we want to integrate um, just plain old natural logarithm of x dx. So a lot of times, you know, when you're doing something that will give an integration by parts problem away, is you'll usually have something kind of a nice function, like x, x squared, and then you'll have a weird function, e to the x, ln of x, sine of x. Um, so kind of look for that pattern. Well, here I just have plain old ln of x. I don't even see anything else. But I can always throw in a times 1. And now I do see two things floating around. So what I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to make u equal to the ln of x term. My dv is going to be the 1 dx term. And then I'm going to use this stuff. So I'm going to make u equal to ln of x. My dv term is going to be 1 dx. So I take a derivative. That's what the d kind of tells you to do. You'll get 1 over x dx when you take the derivative of ln of x. If you integrate v, well, the integral of just 1 is just plain old x. So again, now I'm going to use this stuff, and I'm going to fill in my uv minus v du formula. So it says you'll get u times v, so ln of x times x minus the integral of v, which is x, times du which is 1 over x dx. And when you're doing integration by parts, <clears throat> hopefully the new integral you have, it should either be, it should be easier to evaluate, or somehow at least it should be more simplified than what you started with. If not, two things. It either means 
you picked the wrong U and the wrong DV, maybe you should switch those. Or it just means, hey, you shouldn't be doing integration by parts on this problem at all in the first place. So x times 1 over x is just 1 dx. And now if I integrate this, I'll have ln of x times x. If I integrate plain old 1, I'll get plain old x. I'll tag on my plus c. Um, a lot of times you'll actually see this written as x ln of x minus x plus c. And I've now used integration by parts to find the antiderivative of just ln of x. So let me do one last one here. So one that kind of follows this pattern I was saying a second ago. Suppose we're integrating x times the exponential function 5 raised to the x. Okay, so again, in this case, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick u to be just plain old x, and I'm going to pick dv to be the rest of the stuff, 5x raised to the dx. A lot of times it seems like the way they have the problem set up, the first thing is your u term, but again, don't fall into that trap. You could easily have just written it 5x times x, and then that wouldn't be the case. So it says again that u is equal to x. The derivative of that is just 1 dx. I'm going to make dv equal to 5 to the x. And remember, if you integrate 5 to the x to get v back, you actually get 5 to the x over the natural logarithm of 5. Okay, so you may want to look up that formula in case you forgot it. All right, so again, now it's just a matter, again, of filling in my uv minus vdu formula. It says u is x. It says v is 5 to the x over ln of 5. And then it says I need to subtract away the integral of v du. Well, I'll have 5 to the x over ln of 5. There's my v, and du is just 1 dx. So again, I have to ask myself, is this new part better than what I started with? And yeah, I think definitely it is. I can just pull out the ln of 5. That's just a constant. And now I'm just left integrating 5x dx again, which I actually already integrated to get my v term in the first place. So it says you'll have x times 5 to the x over ln of 5 minus 1 over ln of 5. If you integrate 5 to the x, again you get 5x over ln of 5. We tag on our plus c. And again, if you wanted to, I guess you could rewrite this maybe as x times 5 to the x over ln of 5. There's my first term. And I've got a 5 to the x in the numerator. And now I have a ln of 5 quantity squared in the denominator plus c. And again, there is our antiderivative of x times 5 raised to the x. I hope this makes some sense. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Take a look at my website. I've got lots of other videos on there as well. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you got.